I got a UDT in my PLC, and what I want to do, so it's a very basic car example. What I want to do is when that RFID value is changing in the PLC, so I, I read a new RFID coming in on my line, I want to go in my database, and here I have uh, a set of like recipes based on an RFID number, and get the rest of that data and fill up that UDT in my PLC based on my RFID number. So the way I'm going to do that is, uh, same as before, create a message path. But in this case, either uh, well, I could call a stored procedure and do that, or uh, directly access it in the table, I'm going to call a select. So same idea, a bit more, more complex, because we're going to write back in the PLC. But I've got my trigger, so I'm going to create a trigger that will monitor that um, RFID value. So when that RFID value changes in my PLC, I'm going to trigger my transaction. In this case, I can well I could reuse the same endpoint as as best practice. We would segregate have two endpoints, one for reading and one for writing uh, to the database. But just for the demo, we can reuse that. The map in this case is going to be uh, the other way around. So my input is going to be the results I receive from my database. So that's all, the, all those values here. I don't want everything. And I'm going to write that into my PLC. Um, so I've, I've done that before, so they're already uh, writable. But by default, I would have to make sure that that UDT in my PLC is, um, uh, is writable. And I just drag and drop my tags on there. Uh, so same thing, I could use the function blocks, or I can just connect them uh, directly. Uh, also, we have some added macros here. Uh, I've got a row count. So we can, in this case, I'm writing into individual tags. So I'm going to be able to read only one recipe at a time. But if these were arrays in my PLC, I could go in and get several of them uh, at a time, in which case I'm going to get the number of, of rows returned by the database, and I can fill up that array. So I want to make sure that I know how many results I've got. And, and also uh, in the transaction, we'll see in a second, I can uh, make sure that I don't overfill those arrays. So I want to make sure that that max rows returned is uh, equal or smaller than the uh, the size of my tags. So in this case, they are individual tags. So I want to make sure it's I get only one result. So I get my map. I need an endpoint on the automation side because um, I'm going to write back in my PLC. And then the where clause is what data I'm going to uh, look up in the database. So in this case, I want to look up the record that has the RFID value equal to my PLC uh, RFID here. Uh, I can add more uh, things here and combine them, and or uh, I've got a bunch of operator available to create my, uh, my lookup clause uh, uh, in the database. So right now, I'm just going to look up for that RFID uh, value. And if I get multiple records, I can also order them by a criteria that I choose. But in this case, I'm only going to read one recipe. Save it. And same as before. So I start my uh, triggers and endpoint and so on. And now I can go and call that thing from the PLC. So if I go in my PLC and change my RFID tag, it's going to look up in the database and fill up those tags here. This is what I had here at Toyota, and those are the values that I got back.